Hey guys, and welcome to this SketchUp for Schools tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the tools that you could be using as you go through SketchUp for Schools using this cheat sheet that we're going to import. And then we're also going to go through how to draw these basic shapes. So we'll start off with some different pyramids. We'll go through a cube, sphere, hollow cube, and then we'll end with an ellipsoid or an egg. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our Google Drive folders. So we're going to go over here to where we have menu. We're going to hit home. And what I want you guys to do is you're going to go to your Google Drive right here. And then we're going to create a couple folders. So the first folder that you're going to create is called SketchUp Designs. It's going to be right here. So you're going to click on this icon. And here where it says create folder, you're going to type in SketchUp Designs. You can see it right here as I'm scrolling on the name right here. Once you have that typed in, you're going to hit create. The next folder that you're going to be creating is a folder called reference images. And so right here, reference images, you're going to hit the plus sign again, type in reference images, and then hit create. Now attached to this YouTube video, you should see a link for the reference image that we're going to be using today, which is going to be the SketchUp cheat sheet. So go ahead and load that into your reference images. If you're in Northside, you can also go to your folder inside Schoology and load that in to your reference images. So to go ahead and do that, once you do that, you're going to go back to home. And now we're going to create our first design. So we're going to go over here to this drop down menu. We're going to be selecting architectural feet and inches. So make sure you click on that. Once you have that selected, you're going to hit create new and it should bring this up. Now, when you bring this up, you're going to see this character right here. And this character is used for reference, the size reference the, of how big you're making your designs. For this first video, we're going to delete her. So go ahead and on your keyboard, you can hit the delete button. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to name this. So we're going to come up here to where it says untitled and we're going to save it. So you're going to select on your drive. Once you select the drive, it should you should be able to find your SketchUp designs folder. And then when you're ready, you're going to name this as Basic Shapes Project 1. So Basic Shapes Project 1. Once you, once you have that, you're going to hit Save here. It should be saved. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in that image that I talked about before. So on this menu right here, we're going to click on it and we're going to hit Import. Google Drive, select your drive, and then we're going to be selecting the SketchUp Designs folder again. So go to your SketchUp Designs, and then you're going to go to your Reference Images. Now, if you did it correctly, there should be a SketchUp for Schools cheat sheet that you're going to be importing. And so when this screen comes up, you're going to import it as an image. And then we're going to place this on our floor right here. So we can place it on the floor anywhere you want. I'm just going to place mine right here. And then you're going to size it to the direction that you want. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use one of our tools to actually rotate this. So over here on the menu, you're going to go to where this little cross is. This is called the move tool. You're going to click on it, go to rotate, bring the rotate tool over here. You're going to find the center, the midpoint of the image. And on your keyboard, you're going to click the right arrow key that's going to give us our red axis. So we want to be on the red axis. You're going to click once. You're going to rotate that protractor till it's straight up and down. And then you're going to click on your left mouse key one more time. And then you're going to rotate that until it is parallel. Now, we, we can click on the center of our mouse button to rotate around. And then using your scroll wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in. And now we have our cheat sheet set in place. So again, this is for those people who have never used SketchUp for Schools before. All of these tools are available. So the select tool is it what you would use to select any item. Now, you, if you click on it once and, it is a, and, a, and it's an object or a group, it will select the entire thing. If it is not an object or group, meaning that you drew it and it's separate pieces, then you're going to have to triple click on it to select everything. 
Okay, if you, otherwise when you select on it, it will only select one line. You have the eraser tool, so you can click on something if it's selected and hit erase. Oh, I just erased it. And now if you ever make a mistake like that, you can go back up here to your menu here and hit undo and it will bring it back, okay? Next tool is the paint bucket. And so when you open up the paint bucket tool, uh, if you hit paint, you see that you have some options on your home screen. You have a, and then if you hit the, the eyeglass or the browse, it will bring you up into, you have 3D printing, you have asphalt, brick, colors. If you hit click on colors, it will give you all your different color selections that you can use here in SketchUp for schools. As we keep going, scrolling down, you see that we have glass and mirror. There's landscape options. There's metal options, patterns. If you're building a building, you can have roofing, stone, any type of material that you're looking for. If you have water, different types of water, window coverings, and even wood colors. And so to close this menu here, once you've hit that paint, you can always just hit the close panel. The other thing that is inside of your your paint option is this dropper. So say you painted a color onto a object and you wanted to get that same exact color, you can sample that material and it will show that material over here in your materials panel. Next tool on here is the line and the freehand tool. So lines will draw straight lines up and down, left and right. And then the freehand tool lets you draw whatever, whatever shape that you want. Now you notice that once I connect something, it does solidify that shape. And again, if you ever make a mistake or want to go and uh, want to undo something, you have two choices. One, one, you can hit the eraser tool. The other one is you can hit the undo tool up here in the option menus. Next thing you have is your arcs. And so when you click on this menu, you can see that you have the, you have the arc, the two point arc, the three point arc and a pie tool. So if you want to make these types of shapes, that's the, that's the menu option that you're going to use. Next one is going to be your shapes. So you have rectangles, you have rotated rectangles, circles, polygons, and then the text tool, most of which we will be using today in this tutorial. Next is going to be your push-pull tool. That's going to how, you, how you're going to make 3D shapes. We're going to go through that tool today. You're going to have the follow me tool, which is going to be how you make circles or uh, spheres. And so I'm going to be going through that as well. And then also your offset tool. And so we will be using the offset tool today as well. Next is the outer shell. And so when you're doing buildings or architectural designs, you can get into how to use the outer shell tools. I'm not gonna be going through these tools today as they don't have anything to do with the shapes that we're going into. Next is gonna be your move, your rotate and your scale tool. And so we're gonna be using all three of these tools today in our examples. Next is going to be measurement. So if you want to if you want to measure what you have drawn, you can use the tape measure tool. If you want to dimension what you have drawn, you can use the dimension tool. Here's the text tool. So if you want to labels apart, and then you have section plane, a protractor, and then all of your axes. And so if you here if you look here in the center right here, we have different axes. The blue axis is going straight up and down. The green axis is going from front to back on the plane, and then the red axis is going right to left. And so it's going to be very important that you understand how those axes work. And we're going to go through the menu options and the keyboard shortcuts on those. Next is going to be your walk around, your place, and your look around tools. And so if you are into architectural design, you can use these tools to look and, and move throughout your buildings that you have designed. And the last set of options are your orbit tool. Now, when you click on the orbit tool and you click on your left mouse key, it allows you to move around. The, the shortcut for this, if you have a mouse, is to click down on your scroll wheel and that automatically selects. And so when, I'm, when I have my select tool selected and if I click down on my scroll wheel, it automatically selects that orbit. Next is your pan tool. The pan is a hand and what the pan tool does allows you to move left, right, forward, up and down. You have your zoom tool, which is next. And so the zoom tool allows you to zoom in and out 
Again, there is a shortcut. If you have a mouse, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out as well. And then you also have your zoom window. So if you wanted to zoom specifically into an area, you could hit that and then draw a zoom window on there. And it will zoom in that window for you. And then you can just zoom back out. And the last option on here is your zoom extents. And so again, it's just like that zoom window. So when we click on zoom extents, uh, it allows you to zoom in and out onto an object. And so that's basic menu options. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit my select tool. And for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my move tool. I'm going to move this up and back. So like I said before, we're going to be going through some basic shapes today. Okay, and so my first shape that I'm going to be drawing today is going to be a hexagonal pyramid. So when I go over here, I'm going to Get, click on the rectangle tool. I'm going to go down to where it says polygon. Now I want to make sure when I draw this on the floor that it is on the blue axis. So I'm going to hit the up key. And then when I draw this, I'm going to make it into five feet. So I'm going to put type in five and then the foot symbol, which is next to the enter key. And then when I hit enter, it will, it will make a five foot square. And then I'm going to scroll out. Now I'm going to select that. So I'm going to triple click on it. I'm going to hit my move key and I'm going to move this onto my plane. Now I have a five foot square. The next thing I need to do is go ahead and hit the pencil tool. And then from the midpoint, I'm going to go from midpoint to midpoint and then it will bring me to my center line. So I'm not clicking on anything. I'm just, I'm just scrolling over it. So you see where it says midpoint. And then when I come up, if I go this direction, it will always bring me to that center point. And so I'm going to bring that up, make sure I'm on the blue axis. I'm going to type in five feet again. Now, once I've typed in five feet, then I'm going to start connecting all my lines. And so as I bring this on my pencil tool, I'm going to go from end point to the top of that line that I just drew. And I'm going to go all the way around, just orbiting around until I have my pyramid complete. So this is my five foot by five foot hexagonal pyramid. Now you notice that it is grayed out. And so that means that the faces are reversed. So what I wanna do is I wanna come over here to my select tool and there's two ways you can select it all. Either you can draw a square around it to select it or you can triple click and select it. Now, once you have it all selected, you're gonna right click on your mouse key and go ahead and put reverse faces. That's gonna turn it white. So that's our first shape. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a octahedron. And so here we're gonna go back over here to the polygon tool, select our rectangle tool. And then on the blue face again, you're gonna type in five feet comma five feet. You notice down here on the dimensions, that's where my dimensions is. I'm going to zoom in right now. Now, when you hit enter, it is going to change that into a five foot square. Now, what I want you guys to do is zoom in a little bit. And what we have to do is select the entire image. And then we're going to go over to our rotate tool. So we're going to come over here to the to the side of our piece and we want to make sure that we are on the red axis so make sure you hit the right arrow key you're going to click on it once it's going to and then you're going to hit control you notice the plus sign that is up and then when you click on it again it's going to copy that piece and so what we want to do is rotate it to where it's 90 degrees from our piece click on it a third time and that's going to give you this shape right here. Now what you have to do is go back to your line tool and then from the midpoint, you're gonna come down and start drawing lines from the midpoints to the endpoints. And you're gonna do that on all your sides from midpoint to endpoint. What that's gonna do is a regular pyramid. And then when we bring this down and do it from the bottom midpoint to endpoint, it's gonna give us that diamond shape, which is also called an octahedron. 
And so when I scroll back around, I'm going to do the same thing on this side right here. And so what we want to do is go from midpoint down here on the bottom to endpoint, from midpoint to endpoint. Now you have that diamond shape. Now the next thing you have to do is go to your eraser tool and erase all that outer edge. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do again is we're going to reverse that face. So go ahead and select the entire image, go up to where it says reverse faces, and then reverse. Now what we want to do is we're going to make this into a group. So I'm just going to right click on it, make into a group, and I'm going to do the same thing for this image right here. I'm going to right, I'm going to right click on it, make it into a group. And what this is going to do is prevent us as we touch the images together, they're not going to hit each other. Now I'm going to go to my move tool. I'm going to start moving these down into place. And so if you move them down, you can see that they click into place. And so what I want to do is same thing with this one right here. I want to select my image and I'm going to move this a little bit over. Make sure it's on the, make sure it's next to my piece right here. Bring it on the front. All right. So there's my first two images, right? The next image that I'm going to be drawing is going to be a square pyramid. And so this one's really easy. All you're gonna do again is come down here on the blue axis. We're gonna do the same thing, five foot, comma, five foot. And so now we have that five foot square. Again, go over here to your line tool, go from midpoint to midpoint. And then as you come up, as you, as you scroll over here, you should get the midpoint of the area, and then you're gonna make sure that you draw this up on the blue axis. So you're gonna hit the up key as you're drawing, and then you're gonna type in five feet again to give that five foot length, that five foot height. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna connect all these lines here. This is gonna give us our five foot pyramid, which is our third shape. Okay, let's go ahead and select that image. Right click, reverse faces, and then let's go ahead and group it again and then move it up to the front. Okay, so there's our three shapes so far. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a cube. The cube is the easiest one. So let's go ahead and go back over here. And so this is the first time we're going to use the push pull tool. So we're going to do another five foot by five foot. All of our squares are going to be five foot by five foot. And then we're going to go over here to the push pull tool. Now this is the first time we've used the push pull tool today. So when you scroll in, you should see how it changes the colors. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pull that up and we're going to type in five feet and then hit the enter button. So that gives us a five foot by five foot square. Let's go ahead and select that, make it into a group. There's our fourth, our fourth shape. Next one is going to be a sphere. So we're going to go back over here to rectangle tool. Let's go to the circle tool. Now we're going to come back over here, make sure that we are on the blue axis. So hit that up button. Okay. And now for this one right here, uh, we're going to go with a two and a half foot radius, which will give us a five foot diameter. So go ahead and go 2.5 feet, hit enter. That gives us that, that diameter that we need. And to do a sphere, this is what we have to do. Okay, so we're going to scroll over here to the side. And then we're going to find that center point again. So we're just going to hit end point, and then it should be on our center. And what we're going to do is let's go on the red axis, and we're going to draw a we're going to draw a, another circle that is the same size as the first circle. Okay, so this is the shape that you should have right now. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go over here to the select tool. You're going to select this bottom area. You should see how it changes color. And now we're going to use this follow me tool. So go over here to where it says follow me, right here, and you're going to select on this area and that should give you that sphere right away. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna triple click on that sphere and make it into a group. And let's move this back up. So 
So if you click on it, and then when you click on it again, stay on the red axis, and that will give you in line. So there's our next shape, which was the sphere. That was probably the easiest one. The next one we're going to do is the hollow cube. And so what we're going to do is go back over here to our rectangle tool. And now this one right here, we're going to be on the blue axis. So make sure you hit that up, that up arrow. And we're going to type in the five foot by five foot. Make sure the when I say by, it's going to be a comma. And then hit enter. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up using our push pull tool again. So five feet up. And now we're going to use our offset tool. So go back over to where it says push pull. You're not using follow me, you're using offset. And on the front face, we're going to click on it. And we're going to do a one foot offset. And we're going to do that on the front, the back, I know, the front the, and the two sides. Let's see, we need those two sides. One foot. And then you're going to need one on the top. And you're going to need one on the bottom. The only, the only face that you don't need to draw a offset on is the back side. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back over here to our push-pull tool, and we're going to push this in. And so there's two ways you can get this to hollow out. Either you can bring it to the back side until it hits on edge and hit enter, right? Or when you're pushing it in, you can type in, because we know that this is five feet, and we hit enter, it will hollow out. So for the side, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to hit on edge, and then... I'm going to bring it to the edge. I'm going to click on here, and then I'm going to hit the backspace button, and it's going to hollow it out. So same thing on this side. I'm going to bring it to the edge, click on it one more time, hit backspace, and it will hollow out. I'm going to do this on all of our sides here. So I'm going to bring it down to where, where, that, where that red square comes up, and it says on edge, and then click on the center again, and hit the backspace button to hollow out. on edge, click it, backspace. So there's our hollowed cube. That was pretty easy. And so this is a perfectly hollowed out cube. All of the areas here should be, if we come over to our measurement tool, they all should be one foot, one foot areas on each side. So we're almost done. Last, The last one that we have to build today is the ellipsoid or the egg. And so what we're going to do is come back over here to our circle tool one more time. Make sure you're on the blue axis. We're going to do the 2 foot or 2.5 foot radius, which will give us our 5 foot diameter. Now on this one right here, we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing that we did for, for the sphere. So we're going to come back over here, hit our circle tool, make sure we find the center. So we're going to come over here until we hit center. Make sure that we're on the red axis. We're going to bring it up until we hit the end point. And now we're going to do something a little bit different. So on from the center point, you're going to draw a line going up to the top. And then you're going to draw a line going over here to the end point. And then you're going to use your eraser tool to erase everything except for this area. So this is the shape that you should have. And so again, we're going to come back over here to our follow me tool. We're going to select that bottom area, and then we're going to hit with the follow me tool. We're going to hit that top area, and that's going to give us this cube on the top. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a copy of this, this little sphere right here. So let's go ahead, and we're going to select it all, and then select your move tool. And then clicking on the control key, you should see a little plus sign. Let go control key, and then when you click on the face, you're going to be able to move it okay now that gives us a perfect copy and so what we're going to do now is we're going to come back over here and for the first time we're going to use we're going to use a new tool right and so this tool that we're going to use right now is going to be it's inside the move tool area it's going to be called scale and so when you click on this shape right here let's go ahead and click on it 
you're going to hit your scale and then from this center point right here so don't make sure you're not on the edge make sure you're on the center point you're going to scale it down until it comes down in this direction when you're when you're happy with the shape you're going to click on it unselect it and then you're going to hit the move tool again and you're going to move it over to the edge you want to select this entire piece And then from the end point, you want to move this over until it clicks into place. Once you have that in place, make sure that it's even. Select your entire piece, right click on it, make it into a group. And then there's our last, our last piece, right? And so now we're going to move this into place up here. In line. Select this, move it back over. And so now we have all of our shapes. Okay, so the last two things I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you label these shapes. And so we're going to come over here to where our circle tool is right now. And we're going to go to where it says 3D text. And so this first shape is called hexagonal pyramid. We're going to have open sands. Our height is going to be one foot. Our text extrusion is going to be six inches. You can hit OK. And you're going to bring it this over here and you're going to label this first piece hexagonal pyramid and then you're going to label the rest right so the next one is going to be the same thing we're going to come back over here get your text tool it's going to be it's going to be octahedron okay label it move it into place and the rest so square pyramid and so as you come over here you're going to see that it moves to the different areas right so if you're on this piece right here if you're on the side it will move so you want to make sure that you're on the front and then you move click on it and then move it into place next one's going to be our cube then we have a sphere now the sphere if you want to come over here to the cube click on it and then move it over that's probably the easiest way to do it next one is going to be our hollow cube And then the last one that we have to label, the last shape that we've done today, is the ellipsoid. So it's E L L I P S O I D. And then it's also an egg. So I'll just lay ellipsoid egg. Again, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to put it on the hollow cube first, and then I'm going to move it over to my area where I want it to label. Okay, so that's all of our pieces right here. Now, the last thing I'm going to have you guys do today is you're going to color them, right? So you can color them any color you want. Uh, go over to the paint bucket, go to the tools, go to colors, right? So you're going to hit this little, this little uh, browse button, scroll down to colors, and then you can color all the colors of whatever color you would like to color the, the cubes or the shapes. Just And then when you're done, hit save. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We've gone through the basic shapes. You've noticed we've used a lot of the tools that we've, as we've built these basic shapes. Once you're done, make sure you do hit save. And I hope you guys have a great day.